Welcome back to Ultimate JavaScript Tutorials. What we're going to work on today is diving deeply into button color in Angular Material. So you can see that I've got these three buttons here. This first one is just some pretty basic CSS styling for our buttons to make sure everyone's familiar with how to accomplish styling just through CSS, or really I have a SAS file in place. Um, the second one is using the color attribute that is part of the Angular Material button. API and then our third one here we have a button that has a custom theme so I create a theme from scratch and then very easily and quickly apply it to the button or really I wrap the button in a span and apply it the theme there so that anything inside of that including the button gets that theme applied so we will dive into all the code for all three of these methods so that you have um, a couple different options for styling your buttons with whatever color you need here we are in the code, and so pretty typical component setup here. I have my color button and my HTML file, my, C my SCSS, my TS file here. And so you can see that we have uh, our component set up in here. There's really nothing special so far. And I have my class, but there's nothing going on with it. And here we have our beginning HTML. So I'm going to just use an, uh, a typical button element here. And then we have this mat raised button on it. And so this attribute is what ultimately gives our button the um, Angular Material button styling. So if we go into the DOM here, then we will be able to see some of those classes on it. So here we are on this button and we see MDC button, MDC button raised, mat dash MDC button, uh, raised button, etc. cetera. So those are all courtesy of this attribute. So um, without this, we wouldn't really have an Angular button here. We just have an HTML button here. So anyway, we have our, um, our styles file here and there's essentially nothing in it. These, I just like to go ahead and include them because we'll use them for theming. But what we're gonna do with this very first button that we're going to make is I am just going to apply a class to it. And so um, I'm gonna call it a color button class. And so this is like the most basic way of applying some styling to an Angular Material button. So over here in our style sheet, then I'm gonna say um, color button. And this won't actually work the first time. We'll have to update it a little bit, but I'm gonna say background color is let's say green. And I'm gonna say that the color, so that's the text color is purple. And then I'm going to say that the border is 1px solid orange. So let's take a look. And like I said, that is not going to get applied yet. Oh, we got the border on there, so that's interesting. So anyway, um, we can see our color button class in here, but we can see that if we look at our styling, our background color and our text color here, are being overridden by the default material, uh, Angular Material styling. So we can see that the background color is right here. It's getting overridden and um, same with our color. So what that tells me is probably I can be more specific than the default styling if I just take this class here and go back to our code and say, um, make my selector look for elements that have both of these classes on them. And there we go. So simple as that. Sometimes you do have to dig into the DOM and um, be able to grab a an existing class in order to override the default styling for the color on the Angular Material button. But anyway, simple as that, we've got a button with the proper styling on it. The next thing that I wanna look at is I want to add a color attribute over here in our, um, in our JavaScript over here or our TypeScript over here. So for this, I'm going to say color equals, let's say primary. And it's important to note that in Angular Material, there are three theme color palettes. There's your primary palette, your accent palette, and your worn palette. So that will come in play in a little bit when we uh, come over here and work on our theme. But for now, there is a default theme available and so this primary will tap into that default theme. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna wire up the button to actually use this. And I am going to just copy paste this button that we have 
but I'm going to remove the class. And instead, I will add our color attribute over here. So we'll say color equals, um, we'll say color equals color. And then we will say, actually, let's just leave it at that for now. Let's go and take a look at our button here. So we need to add a little bit of margin between these two, but we've got our color on there um, just with that. So let's take a look at this second one. So here we are, we've got some background color on it, and that's all that we have really affected so far, is that background color. And the interesting thing is it's actually being applied through this, I'm not sure if the right name is a tag or a, um, a style variable here. So um, anyway, it's actually affected kind of the inner workings of um, Angular Material here. And we can also, let's see if there are any styles on it. So I see matte primary on this button. Let's look up here. So this one that we did not use the color attribute on does not have that matte primary. And this one does. So that's probably kind of behind the scenes um, or with selectors, that's, that's, um, that selector is probably having an important impact. In fact, if I remove it, oh, nothing happens. Yep, there it goes. If I remove it, then um, we do in fact lose that styling. So let me refresh this. Pretty cool to dig into the DOM and really learn um, deeply about how these things are working. Let me quickly go in to my styling and I will add a little bit of margin over here. And let's just say two rim. And I'm not even gonna check that. Let's go back over to our code here. And so the other thing that I wanna do in this is I'm gonna put in a click handler. And so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in our TypeScript file here. So I'll say handle click. And let's say it's gonna have an event. And we'll say this.color equals, and then I'm gonna use a template literal here. And I'll say this.color if it's equal to primary already, then we will change it to the accent palette color. And um, if it's not already primary, then we will uh, put it back to primary. So we have a click handler in place, but we have to wire it up. So we go back over here to our button and over here in our button, we can add a click and we will say, Handle click, which is the name of our handler that we just made. And sometimes VS Code is just a little too helpful. I type one, um, uh, one of my um, quotes and it just goes ahead and adds the other. And then I'm already to the right of that one. So I keep typing and I don't even realize it. But anyway, I will say event. And so it's gonna pass the event into this handle click. And let's make sure that the compiler is happy. Looks like it is. So going back over here, we've got our margin on here now that I just added. If I click this, then it looks like that click handler is working. If we look at the DOM, then let's see if we can see our accent class on here. So yeah, there it is right here at the end, matte accent. So um, pretty interesting that that is in there. And let's see, we've got our background color here. So once again, it is actually using this, um, this class, or excuse me, this variable here. So pretty interesting how that all works. Now, the final thing that we are going to do is we're going to go in and create a new theme. So bear with me, this is a little bit more code. Before we move on to the theme uh, and applying color through a custom theme, then I want to mention that all the code for this video is actually um, at my website, ultimatejavascripttutorials.com, and there is a link to that the particular article for this video in the video details. So do check that out if you wanna be able to copy paste some of this code. Um, what I'm gonna do is I am actually going to copy paste it, some of it anyway, um, just so, to save us some pain here. But I'll go ahead and show you the basics and then I'll copy paste all the values in just to save some time. So if I wanna create a new palette, then here's how that would look. I'd say orange palette or whatever I wanna call it. And um, I add a SAS map filled with values so let's say FFC100, so that's a shade of orange. And then I might add another value in the map. So these are the keys and uh, these are the colors of the values. So let's say FF9A00 
et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'd add in more values because it's required in order to um, work properly. I'd have to add in values all the way to 700 if I want to um, be able to use these palettes properly uh, with some of the given and default things in material angular buttons. So anyway, I'd want to add a contrast also. And so it's the exact same. It's kind of like an inner map. So I'd do something like um, RGBA of, let's say, blue and an opacity of 0 0.5, something like that. So anyway, I'm going to, uh, and I've got to have my apostrophe at the end, uh, my semicolon, excuse me, at the end. Um, so that's the general idea of how to create a um, variable that's ultimately tied to a SAS map filled with our different colors for our palette. And then we actually have to assign that to an actual material angular palette. So anyway, I'm going to um, skip ahead and copy paste some of this. All right, here we are copy pasting done. You can see that I've gone 50 through 700. I've got uh, a handful of contrast values in here and I created a second palette, which is going to be my, um, my accent palette. So now that I've got those two in place, we can do the next step of our theme. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just come up here and I'm gonna copy this variable name. And down here, I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna say my dash primary is mat.define dash palette. And inside of here, I'm going to pass in that orange palette. Um, and so then I'm gonna say 300. So this is my new primary color, is this um, from my orange palette, the 300 value in it. So I'm gonna do the same thing for an accent. So I'm gonna say my dash accent. And once again, mat.define dash palette. And here I'm going to say um, my Seabreeze color from up here. My Seabreeze SAS map, I should say. And I will say 50 and 100 here. So um, I am now going to really create the theme. And I will say my dash theme. And here I'm going to assign that a mat.define light theme. And I'll talk about this in just a moment, why I did that. So first I'm going to say color. And my primary is this my primary variable that I created. And I kind of misspoke up here. I said I created my primary color. Really, I just created a variable that I'm going to assign to the um, primary value here. And I do need this in um, inside of parentheses here. So we've got our primary value here. And let me put a comma. And inside. Um, next, we're going to do our accent. And here we say my dash accent. So I'm just taking this value that I set up up here and I'm setting in my new theme, which is just set to a variable of my theme. I've got my color for my new theme and um, just need my semicolon here at the end. And you might be wondering why I defined mat.define light theme, but these are essentially, uh, if you read the Angular Material docs, um, they have a really good section. You go to their docs and like one of the main sections is how to, how to use the theme, how to create a theme. And in that, it highlights the basic <clears throat> things that you have to have in a theme. So you have to have a primary color, an accent color, and you have to have um, defined whether it's a light theme or a dark theme. So uh, you can have a worn color also, like I could have worn here, but that is optional. Uh, these two are necessary, however. And then um, the a couple more things that I'm going to configure here. Um, let's see. I could add a typography, I could add a density, but for now I'm just gonna actually skip those. So what we need to do is I need to create a class that is used for actually applying the theme. So anything that is wrapped in this class in my HTML, uh, anything like let's say I put this on a div, anything inside of that div will pick up my, my theme that I've created here. So I'm going to say at include and I'll say mat dot button theme because I'm using this specifically for buttons here. And so I will say my dash theme. And let's see. So we've got that. And um, now we're done with our theme. Before we move on and apply the theme in our HTML code, there's one more thing that I want to show you. And um, I want to show you how to actually 
pull a value out of one of our palettes, um, especially contrast value. It took me quite a while just to find the syntax for how to do that. So um, let's say I want to um, target a specific class in my code with um, a specific color. So I'm going to create a specific selector here. Um, I'm gonna say, let's see, I'm gonna say mat-primary. Remember we saw that the primary class was automatically applied in the code when we have a primary color on our button. So now that I've got that selector, then inside of here, I'm going to say the color, as in the text color, is going to be um, my contrast color. So I'll say mat.get contrast dash color dash from dash palette. And then inside of here, I'm going to say um, the name of the SAS map. So remember, I set my map to my dash primary and um, I let, I let um, Angular Material know that it is a palette, that this SAS map is a palette. So then I can use this mat function on it to extract a value. So I've got my primary, and then I'm going to say, get the value at the key 50. So that's gonna be this blue value. It'll look a little bit purple in our app when it's running, but that's the code that it's gonna grab. So um, if you wanted to do things another way, what we could do instead of that is I could have done this. I could have said um, MDC dash protected dash button dash label dash text dash color. Um, but I was unable to get uh, this value to apply to this uh, CSS variable here, the SAS variable here. Um, but we'll look at the DOM and I'll show you what I mean. Before we go and look at the DOM, then we need to actually apply our ultimate theme class. So let's go over here to our button. And um, before I actually try and apply it anywhere, I need to have one more button here. So I'm going to actually create a span and wrap this button in the span and I will apply our uh, ultimate theme class to the span. And so I mentioned in the intro, or I mentioned earlier that we actually have to wrap our button in a span because, um, or inside of a div or something like that and apply the class at this parent element level uh, because the theme is actually looking for children elements to be applied to. So we've got this so far, and I'm actually going to add our uh, color value here. Now let's take a look at this in the DOM. So everything is looking good on our third button here. We've got that orange value that we expected. And um, here's what I was talking about with the color value. So if I remove this, um, then we're getting a color value here. This is kind of interesting. So uh, this was an alternative way. I am changing the value of this variable. The reason that I knew the variable name is because I had seen it here in the DOM lower down. Um, and so you can see that it was this value and I'm overwriting it. Um, so I think that uh, it's, if we assign a value like purple to it, oh, that didn't work right. If we assign a value to it like purple, then uh, we'll get kind of the expected results. But this value that we were trying to assign was the same blue value as up here. But you can see that it didn't really know what to do with it. It didn't translate it to blue. Um, anyway, so if you just directly assign a value like that, then it works fine. But it's always nice to be able to, you know, if you make a theme, to be able to use the theme values. And um, I was not able to be successful in that. However, I just wanted to show you these alternatives for how you can style your button text color when you're using a theme and when you're using the um, primary values and, and applying your background color. Because sometimes it's pretty easy to apply a background color using uh, the color attribute and a theme, but um, you actually just kind of have to be more specific to apply your text color and do something like this. So anyway, now you have three different options for applying color to Angular Material Buttons, and I hope that this was helpful. Please um, do consider subscribing.